Hey guys, welcome to Oxygen Not Included, Clay's Amazing Space Colony Simulator Extraordinaire. My name's Twitchy and we have been in the LZ Alpha for nearly 200 cycles now. Cycle 195 right now, we are definitely going to be seeing cycle 200. But we're suffering a little bit of an overheat problem down here at the moment. In fact, it's an overheat problem that just continues to go on. So I'm going to go ahead and go, hey, can you just turn this building and this building off if you could? Is it not Mima coming down here to do this? Uh, Mimi, sorry, coming down here. I shouldn't have named her something so very close to the actual original character's name because now I just keep getting mixed up and it's uh, a little embarrassing every time I do that, you know? A little embarrassing. Uh, so this is the uh, toggle change setting. Oh, come on. Where, where is Cubic right now? Let's go and finish these. So I want to go ahead and do a whole bunch of cooling down over here. You can see that these are definitely taking far too much damage, and we need to try and figure out how to get some cool over here. Now, we have all the way over here this wonderful little cold setup room here. We can put some liquids in this side and cool things down, but I think we're actually going to make use of the gas itself. So I'm going to go around and put down a bunch of ventilation of gas pipes here. I think we're going to take one... Two. Do we want to take a third from the bottom? No, I think we'll just take those two for now. One of them's going to go down this way, and one of them is going to come over this way. So as Matt's plan is quite nicely demonstrating over here, we've got a little bit of a system set up where we can start introducing a bit of this super hot water from this steam geyser into this system over here. And I'm going to do this through the wonders of gas exchange. So I'm going to get a bit of a radiant gas pipe here, and we're literally just going to do that. That... That's, that's what, no, no, actually, let's do it there instead. Let's do it there instead. Uh, we're going to then get a bit of an automation. We're going to go for a thermo sensor. We're going to pop that one right there. And literally those two are going to connect uh, amongst these two here. But we want to start making a bit more of a pocket this side before we get going a little bit any further with that. I want to get an insulated gas pipe. We're going to take it from this one. We're going to come out, down, and I think we're going to go all the way over here to this one, perhaps through this way. Yeah, that, that looks beautiful. I will take it. What's this taking down? Oh, we've we've frozen liquids in here, haven't we? Yeah, okay, so this was a problem that I had last time. We started picking up a little bit of the uh, normal water because we had some ice melt over here. It flowed into here, and then I started just, like, turning pipes off because that's what I needed to do to get rid of it all. Okay, that's fine. We can just tidy this up, though. Quick little note to an experiment we were running the last time. I dumped a bit of ice into our water here. And you can see that it's currently got a temperature of 5.6, but you'll notice it's significantly less than the 15 tons we had. That's because I swept up a bunch of it to see what the transfer was like on the inside. And you can see that actually it's transferring uh, about the same sort of temperature, same sort of, if anything, it's actually transferring heat quicker from the storage bin. I feel that the storage bin might be uh, having something to play in its thermal conductivity as well. I mean, that would be very interesting, spreading it all across two tiles rather than one. I don't know. Oh, look, oh, look, oh, look. We, we've made, made some mushroom. That's great. That's great. That literally six episodes to make a singular mushroom. I feel so proud of myself. For some reason, Miss Aligned has fallen asleep on the floor here. I'm, I'm not. I, I don't think she's an narcoleptic. Plus, nobody's that stressed. What, what's going on here? Uh, that was Forrest. Forrest has got low morale. Oh, wow. We should, we should watch out for that. Uh, somewhere in here is the woman I'm not looking for, though. Well, let's have a look. What What's going on here? Where Where is your, like, tiredness meter? I've not seen that anywhere. I don't, I'm not actually sure where it is kept. I'm going to assume it's the stamina, actually. Chippicans will pass out from fatigue when stamina reaches zero. Wow, I wonder what caused that. I'm, I'm going to go with not getting enough sleep because you have to eat overnight. Yeah, maybe, maybe. And that was a whole day of looking around and spotting stuff, and we got the majority of this pipe in place. None of this work got done, though we did let a whole load of chlorine into what is going to be the ethanol chamber, so we, we're going to have some problems there, I think. Okay, beginning of the next day, Matt Frank has come down here and he's put this little automation switch in. I'm going to go ahead and just connect that straight across here, and I want to go, hey, if it's above... 50 let me know let me know and it's oh, it probably is no it's not okay so if it's a no no we wanted to say below let me say it because then we can say hey when this door is open hey go ahead and open it i think that's something that can happen there right if it's the green power it opens and if it's not it closes uh it doesn't really tell me anywhere but I, i'm sure i saw that somewhere right okay so we got ourselves a great little system set up here so when the water is below 50 degrees the door will open but if it happened to be in the other orientation i this water was hot the door would close now that's not the end of what we want to do here i want to also take another automation system i'm going to go for a knock gate right here i'm not sure whether i could just 
drag, drag it straight past like that. So I'm going to go straight ahead and do uh, one of these. I'm sure that's actually not necessary. Well, I'm not sure, but I, uh, I have a feeling that's not strictly necessary. But we're going to take this up here and we're going to try and aim for this one over here. And that should then turn this whole system on and off as and when it is needed. Oh, look, 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 we got some snow falling. It just it just randomly fell down here. Okay, that, that came from, like, liquids melting up here. That, that's um kind of okay. We, we do have a bit of a backing up problem here, but that is literally because this lot melted into there. I uh, will go ahead and mop that, but it's not, not really that important. I don't think it can go up and around there. No, in fact, I think it's kind of backing up that way a little bit. Mm-hmm. Downtime has been called, but I'm told there's new principles available. Wow, I could just click on that, can I? Uh, don't, no, I'll take the wart seed, thank you. This is much more impressive. I kind of expected pressing the, the thing over there to do the same as pressing the H button of, like, zooming, on the, zooming in on the printing pod. But no, turns out that is not a thing. Tell you what is a thing, though. I am going to have press F7. Try and figure out how to uh, remove all of this pipage that we've got on the go here, because this is this is all extraneous from what we need. This is a, an old system that really didn't actually work out and do what we needed it to. So all of that can get uh, be gotten rid of. Okay, that's cool. Uh, also, the not the natural gas. If we could uh, come out of this, who knew that you couldn't click on buildings at all when you're in that view? Uh, click on that to de deconstruct that, and also the same with this gas pump. If we can deconstruct that, that would be great. We also have a little uh, thermo sensor in here. That's good though. That'll be useful later. Wow, Mad Frank literally just getting to bed, and he's hungry. What? Mm-hmm. Pressure is looking good in the base at the moment. That's beautiful. So we just noticed we didn't have much coal in the local area, so I've gone around and done a few bits of excavation. We had uh, a few uh, nice patches around, so I thought I'd just go and dig them out. You can see there's, like, little remnants just lying around. That's cool. But I also thought that maybe we would take this out, because so often I've seen... Oh, that is exactly the one I didn't want to take out, isn't it? Okay, that's fine. I was just about to say, I've seen people have to jump over that stuff many, many times, and I'd like to... Uh, speed up that process okay so i can't do that one uh, and we definitely want this to be on the highest property uh, possible uh hopefully there's some igneous rock around uh that is definitely going to be a thing okay beautiful just like that and then misaligned is going to fill it up okay but hopefully before we lose too much hydrogen because that that's what we're worried about here is the loss of hydrogen i really wish i could destroy this ladder but it is just not something that i am able to do i don't know if i can get some explosives at some point in um because that'd be great i mean maybe we could melt the ladder i mean what is the uh the, the ladder properties let's have a look melting point it's only 200 degrees we probably could do that one day in the future <laughs> gotta worry about all the stuff behind it as well let's have a look properties here uh melting point that's a thousand degrees that's okay melting point that's a th oh okay okay almost everything has a melting point much much higher than it hmm we could totally put a line of oh no because we'd melt the whole lot right hmm how do we isolate the cold from that Okay, so interestingly, the hydrogen flow has got set up before the automation has been put in place. This slightly worries me that we might actually start um, freezing our salt water and making ourselves a little bit of brine. We'll see how that goes. That, that'll be very interesting. At least we'll know that it'll be uh, super on the job. And more importantly, we'll know whether that we will overwhelm the heating system or not. Oh, man, we are we are coming out with very cold. And then it's going to just instantly touch this. I, I'm, I'm very intrigued, very intrigued to see what's going to happen here. I might even start knocking through this wall. No, not until the uh, not until the system's up in place. If there's ice there, that's fine. We can dig through it. Uh, okay, what's going on here? Uh, it's warming up the hydrogen at quite the rate. Doesn't look like it's doing it quite fast enough uh, to impart its temperature that quickly. That's a bit of a shame. I was kind of hoping it would. Maybe we need to uh, snake back and forth with the uh, with the hydrogen here. We've gone down. I mean, we've we've pretty much taken the temperature out of it by the time it leaves. Okay, that that's fine. That's fine. And then this hydrogen gets passed into here where it should be either eaten by the thermal and anti-entropy device, get thrown back into the vent, or get consumed to make some power. Uh, these are all fine by me. Uh, hopefully we can keep up here with it being consumed. Maybe we want to disconnect the consumption. No, 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 because that leads to troubles. Maybe we want to turn the consumption onto the uh, small flow. Hmm. Hmm. 
Mm, I definitely feel like we're on the losing end on the hydrogen battle. If you can see that we've like got all of this that isn't being let back into this area, so we're going to be getting um, less dense, which means they'll be less less cool to pass around. I don't know whether that's actually going to be how it works out. Uh, the temperature is definitely dropping, uh, raising over here every time it pumps out, though. I think. I think maybe just for now. Am I going to do that just for now? I don't know. I don't know how we're going to fix it. I'm going to break this pipe, uh, and we're going to put in a valve. Yeah, that's what's going to happen here. I just realized I don't need a knock gate here at all. I don't even know why I put that there. Whoa. Cycle 200. Wow, didn't really think we'd get here, if I was to be honest. Um, well, no, actually, I, I really didn't think we'd get here, but I thought we'd be a little bit further along with the uh, the space science. But it turns out that trying to run a cooling system has got very, very difficult. Uh, so we're, we're trying to sort that out. <laughs> all right, day cycle 200 coming in strong. All the duplicates seem to be going nice and healthy. It's nice to make these big milestones. But really, it would be a lot nicer if I could just get my cooling system working. That would that would make me very happy. We could then, like, crack this open and never have to worry about water again because this is starting to get down a little bit low now. I think we're about to have a water issue, and I'm glad that I've noticed just right now because, man, that, that could have got a lot worse very quickly. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the water here. We're going to, like, drag this pipe across over this way, and we're going to say, no, um, this lot here. Let's turn that off. All right, cool. All right, nice and fast to turn the water off. What's going to happen with the rest, though? Also, where is this going? Is this all dropping down and into the... I was just backing up a little bit. Okay, I like the fact that it's, like, stacking up. I was expecting it all to come down into this. Uh, but as soon as the vent gets fixed into place, and let's see who's doing this. Luna. Oh, nice. Cool. Uh, as soon as that all happens, uh, we should get the water flowing again, hopefully. Of course, there is the... Uh, oh, Trouticus needs to come down and actually build. But there is, of course, the uh, the pipe behind it. Misaligned coming along to do the business there. Okay, that's cool. I kind of wish... Ah, that's cool. Misaligned would actually do the building as well. And as she is there... Awesome. All right, come on. Don't don't let me down now. Let's go down and have a look at the uh, water here. Is that going to carry on backing up all the way to here before it starts pumping again? Or will it actually start moving? Okay, let's go look. Yeah, it just starts It just starts flowing. Okay, that's brilliant. That is brilliant. Oh, is this all of them? Is this all? I've not seen these get deliveries, but it looks like it is. Okay, beautiful. Beautiful. So now that that's all done... We're going to come through and just knock out this whole area here. And hopefully, you know what? I'm not even going to go as far as doing that. Uh, and hopefully the people that come and do this dig, which should be misaligned, uh, won't won't get caught in the hot water uh, and stuck on the wrong side of the door. It's one, one of the things I'm worried about. <laughs> You know what? I did want to not gate that. It's okay. I'll move it somewhere else. But here comes the heat. Okay, let's push it through, see how it rolls. Taking down the granite is probably a good safe bet. Okay, okay. The mixing of the temperatures has started. Uh, we'll have to see what happens here. Uh, I also need to go, hey, you, uh, deconstruct that one uh, as higher priority as possible uh, and then we'll also automation not gate. Where are you? We'll put that right there and put the wire back in a second. Okay, and the wire then goes from here to here, and then, when the door is open, the pump turns off because it's not too hot, right? Two principles available. Let's see what they're going to give us today. We choose a blueprint, ice, shine nymph. Here we go with the shine nymph, obviously. So as cycle 200 starts to come to a close, I'm quite happy with what we've done over here, really waiting for that knot gate to get put back into place. But over here, we're going to have a uh, cooling problem that is a little bit more awkward to sort out. First thing I think we're going to have to do is just rip this hole apart. I've been looking at it for a while now, and just the fact that we've got four of these crammed into one room, the fact that the carbon scrubber down here doesn't work because we're not getting enough water getting cycled through, there are a whole host of reasons why I feel like we could just go with scrapping this entire thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just just do it. Look, watch me here. You can't stop me. Bam. It's all gone. It's all gone. Now, this is going to uh, be quite quite the, uh, the task for people to get going with tomorrow. But I also feel like we're going to start dealing with some very hot gases after a little bit. So we're probably going to have to start thinking about getting some sort of... Well, first, I want to put the insulated tiles around here. But secondly, I think we're going to need the atmosphere suits down here. We've got them running for the other side of the base. It is a shame that we don't need them for this side. I mean, I don't know. We could definitely have... Um, a gas collection system in here and it could all work out well for us getting this built might be a bit of a problem but then we could turn the atmospheric suits off i don't know i don't know let's see what's going on over here quickly do we have any gas issues no these literally are all full we could definitely support more more suits 
Well, for that to happen, we're going to have to make a few over here. How many does it say we can actually make? We can go ahead and make something like three of them. Uh, I don't know whether that's going to be enough, but that's what I'm going to uh, queue up there. We also want to come down. I believe it's in the base we have got the... Uh, it's not in the base, is it? Where is it? I don't know. I will go through and have a look and try and find it. Okay, it's in stations. Atmospheric checkpoint. Yeah, that is the direction I want that to be in. All right, thank you. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and put one, two, three docks down like that. And then I'm going to start destroying everything we've set up over here and setting up for more oxygen over here. This is gonna get brutal. This is just gonna get stupid brutal. No, this is probably a good idea to not deconstruct the ladder. People need to be able to get up and down, right? Cancel, buildings, ladder. There we go, that, that should do the job we need. I'm really worried about what's gonna happen over here. So this is starting to spill out a little bit of water, but it's overpressurized, so it shouldn't overfill. But when this gets down to, I mean, like just look, 16, 16,000 kilograms. One kilogram of these is a tile. We've got like one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's gonna take the majority of the space up in here and then we need this pipe to pump out somewhere before it can get used. And all that does is go down to this carbon scrubber that never gets used. We need this to go elsewhere. We need this to get used somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure how sustainable this is, but the way that we've got this set up is all the oxygen will come through and have an opportunity to fill up all of the atmospheric dock suits before being vented out into the base, which should hopefully keep this nice and high pressurized. Uh, I'm worried about it building up a lot of CO2 over this side now that we've removed the vent from over here, but we'll, we'll just see what happens there. It should, fingers crossed, hopefully work. Okay, atmosphere suit in place. Mad Frank grabbing it straight away because he needs to come over here and get on with all this lot. <laughs> oh, Forrest didn't go to the work site. What's he going to do over here now? What's actually going to go down? That's going to be very interesting. I'm, I, I have no idea why he would come this way. Unless he's going to pick up some granite. He can't, can't possibly be here to pick up water, right? Maybe he wants this iron. I mean, that would be interesting. Oh, he's off. Well, there we go. Any, any idle speculations that we had will have to wait. Quick throwback to the first part of the episode. Mad Frank has come along and put the automation in place here, so we should now be able to have a complete system going through. So when this door closes and this water is too hot, this hydrogen gas pump will turn on, pumping cold gas through here, cooling everything down until we equal a nice equilibrium there. Hmm, maybe we want to put some delay on there so it carries on cooling for a little bit longer, but no, no, for now, that will work out well. Oh, what's going to happen here? He's come down for iron ore. I didn't expect the water to get pushed into that. Oh, actual iron, it turns out. Okay, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, now that the water's gone in there, is it going to all, like, steam away? I, I really feel like it should, because, yeah, look at the temperature drop, uh, jumping up there. 113 kilograms... Uh, oh, that's no, kilograms, sorry, that's not temperature. Low, I was looking totally at the wrong thing there. But if we come to the polluted water, what is that temperature jumping up to? It's not. It's going down. What? So the volcano itself can't actually pass on any heat whatsoever. Okay, that's very interesting. Very interesting indeed. So earlier on I said I was worried about carbon buildup down by the airlock because we're getting all the pressure over this side and I'm worried about people breathing over this side. But thankfully there seems to be like a vast amount of back... Uh, of uh, back propagation over this end so we could easily just take another vent off of here so i'm going to go ahead straight away and do that we're going to pop that right there and i'm going to go hey cast pipe down here now this does mean literally half of the oxygen that gets um, produced is going to come out here but we'll, we'll see how that actually ends up faring we could end up filling this entire area here as well because that door does get used quite often but i'm hoping that that will actually sort of balance itself out in the end one whole uh, cycle of deconstruction has got us about this far, but I heard that printer noise, so let's go see if we can get ourselves anything decent out of here. We've got some thimble reed seeds. That's not amazing, and to be honest, none of these are amazing. We'll get the thimble reed seeds, but, you know, no nothing was really jumping out at me there. Oh, look, the Murphy. It's actually, like, been planted. Temperature problem still, but it's actually been planted. Beautiful. Even with super local materials, sometimes it can take an absolute expert at building some real time to put some pipes together. I realized that I'd done a mistake here by trying to like drop off the polluted water into the hole just to be picked up and sucked up again. So what I've done is made a, a bit of a correction here. The water that gets sicked up, sucked up gets fed into the filtration system and then the filtered polluted water gets sent up into what I need to do with the polluted water, the uh, pinch of peppers and the slime production. 
Okay, we've got a little bit of an interesting situation here. It turns out that one of the eggs that has hatched is a long-haired slickster. And if we look here, his comfortable range, I mean, it's survivable in here, but it definitely seems to be more to the lower end. And he only consumes oxygen. He doesn't consume the carbon dioxide. I think we need to set up a new pen for this guy. I think we're going to have to maybe move him up here. We can just do this relatively simply as well. If we're uh, coming to the food... Uh, and get a critter drop off. We'll just pop that there. Uh, and when that gets built, we need to set it up to receive the uh, the long-haired slickster. But there was also another thing we need is a station and a grooming station. Because, of course, we do want this guy to be, like, happy after all. And then we just need to wait for him to grow up so that we can hit the wrangle button. And uh, I, I think that's how that works. Do we have wrangle there? We don't have wrangle there. How do we pick up a tame slickster and move it somewhere else? Maybe the critter trap. Maybe critter trap is what I'm after. I, oh, I, I don't know. We, that means we need to get onto the making plastics, which is uh, ne next episode's job. But full oh, team working over here. Look at this. Beautiful. Everyone's going around doing their jobs, making sure everything gets ripped down and is indeed being built for this scaffold. Uh, I got most of the way through the ripping down before I was like, oh, wait, people can't people can't reach over there. I should probably put some ladders down to that. Uh, to, to give a little bit of room. Okay, so over here, we've got this natural gas, and I'm seeing this uh, This is kind of like a two-step process. I think one of the first things we're going to do is move the ladder over to uh, this side. Now, th th so, as I say, the cooling is a two-step process. First, we need to cool down the gas, and secondly, we need to cool down the generators. I, I think this is more than capable... Uh, we are more than capable of doing this, but I feel to get down here, we need to do something special. Let's just go destroy everything. We're just going to wipe this out. And now I've got to wait for them to all come around and do these things. <laughs> I think it's safe to say there have been uh, ecological consequences of replacing the tiles all around the outside. Actually, to be honest, just opening that door, suddenly we've got like a kilogram, a kilogram and a half of natural gas fall falling out of there. It's uh, quite horrific, really. Okay, so we've got a tricksy little swap out that we need to do here. Hopefully this is up at a high enough priority that's now on the end of the list. We need to take this door out because it was one of the major leaks of uh, temperature through into the generator room that we had over here. So we're going to take that out. I've already put up two tiles here just in an effort to try and stop a little bit of backflow of the heat coming out. Okay, that should do us pretty well there. Uh, it's going on to the end of the list of all the jobs for around here, so we just got to wait for Mad Frank to go along and do all of this. I've kind of restricted this door, turned everybody's access off apart from Mad Frank and Miss Aligners. They're the ones who can get stuff built pretty quickly. Don't want people hanging around in here, in here who don't really belong, you know? The start of cycle 206, we're at minus two degrees on the ice. Whilst finishing off the liquid pipes over this side, I decided that actually the hydrogen vents here needed a little bit of a rework. So what's happened is I've lined them all up on the gas line in order of ascending priority, of descending priority, sorry. The uh, the thermal anti-entropy nullifying device here. This needs the hydrogen first. This is the thing where all the cooling is happening. So that needs to make sure that we're getting it. And also then, because we're extracting cold hydrogen out of the, uh, the chamber here. I've then got a gas vent next to make sure that the hydrogen is at the maximum density it can be before it then gets passed along to the hydrogen generator to burn it for power. I think that's a beautiful setup and you should all do the same. Okay, the next difficulty is I've got this bunch of radiant gas pipe here. I want to use this to cool down this bottom edge of the natural gas. The natural gas comes out at a ridiculous temperature. Anything up to 150 degrees C, obviously it, expand, it expands and spreads its temperature all over. So it's not quite that when it gets down here it's still at 50 odd but we can have the situation where the pump down the end will overheat so i'm gonna put my first cooling system in here and now i want to try and figure out how to get the cold gas from here up there and i think we're actually probably going to use this ladder and system that we've got in place over here yeah in fact this is exactly the way we're going to go we're going to go straight across here and then try and figure it out from there Okay, so the route I've chosen, we're coming out here, we're going to jump over a few of these pipes, come along up to this ladder here. This is going to go all the way up past the uh, the hatch. Pat, oh, we've really got to sort out our hatches at some point. Up over here where we can start digging across over this way and it comes down and in and into the cooling loop. Where we're going to then send back literally like just parallel to it. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and that should work out well. Dump it over here in the uh, in the gas filtration system. Why didn't you show me that? I pressed the button. Maybe even just like throw it in the end here. Uh, and then all the hydrogen, in fact, no, even down here will do. Uh, and then all the hydrogen will get passed back through and pass it out. I'm wondering if there's some other way we can pass it. Maybe like into this line here, because this is the one that comes down here. Of course, the thing to remember about any job is half the job is putting the infrastructure in place to get their job done. So I'm a little bit worried about our carbon dioxide down here. We used to have a bunch of slicks and they were doing very well and they were eating all of it. And then these guys got old 
Uh, and they've given birth to long-haired slicks, which are not the guys that I particularly want down here, because as we pointed out earlier, they do not survive in the carbon dioxide. They survive in the oxygen. I don't know what we're going to do about that. At least this guy is quite happily going along and eating up everything that he can at a prestigious rate. You can see now these guys have been um, hatched and we don't have the other old guys around. They, uh, he's very happy. He's very, very groomed. He's got like a serious, serious metabolism on the go. Uh, if only, if only we could get him to drop that lava egg instead of the, um, the long haired leg. I don't, I don't know. Between 20 and 26. What about this one? It, it, it doesn't say how we get there. Okay, 20 and 60. Maybe we need to go hot, hotter. Should we Should we try going hotter here? We need to get that temperature up to about 70 so that we can have... Uh, or even 65 so that we can get the right eggs. That's what we want is the right eggs. I'm going to send Forrest down to this iron volcano here to start conducting analyses on what's, uh, what's this uh, dormant period and stuff like that is about. Maybe because I want this iron. Iron is a refined material, and so far we've having to use like the, the brute force method of just smashing up any uh, ore that we find to trade it in for half, nut, half refined materials and half sand, which is nice, don't get me wrong, I need that sand, but it would be good to get just, like, nice refined materials for free, right? That would be great. I think we could also use the powers of our steam generator to take away the heat from here, but that's gonna be for next episode, because we're still trying to move the hydrogen around. So I'm gonna do a little bit of future planning here. I'm gonna go ahead and put two gas shut-off valves. Stop, Manfred, please. Uh, we need to take away your gas pipes going down here, and actually replace them with ones at the top. So the plan is that cold gas comes in via this pipe here, and then can split off in two uh, automation grid controlled systems here. So this one is gonna be picking up the temperature sensor over here to see whether we need to send gas this way, and this one will be picking up the temperature sensor in the generator room to see whether we need to send gas that way. Genius. So the Slickster's body temperature is on the way up. Are we going to be able to get to uh, 60 before its reproduction hits full? I don't know. I'm hoping so. I'm really hoping so. Oh, man, it's uh, it's getting hot here. <laughs> I think I might want to rip this door out and replace it with insulated tiles. But, whoa, that's, that's going to be a job there. The moment I do that, we lose all our cold gas. But it will stop the cold transferring outside here. Oh, it's it's a tough one. It's a tough one. I'm just looking at the way that the uh, anti-entropy thermal nullifier is just constantly working. Now, every time a Jupiter comes in and out of here, that does bring some uh, some temperature with it, so I can understand why it is, but I also really do feel like it's that door. And maybe these tiles are about obsidian tiles. Ew. Of course, if I wanted to be really smart about it, I'd actually double wall, make a triple layer, sorry, of insulated tile, or take out the middle layer, and then just leave vacuum on the inside, because obviously heat can't transfer across a vacuum and that would then only leave this door as a point of failure and then we could also then put a mini pump in there and pump all the temp all the gases out of there and have a, 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 a vacuum right there as well leaving only the bit that they need to jump across in fact you could even leave a gap there so they wouldn't need the thing to jump across hmm maybe for version two I mean, after a day's worth of building, they've, they've done all right, but there's also lots of spaces where they've not done all right. Okay, Matt Frank got along and connected all the pipes down here. That's beautiful. In this little bit here, you might remember that I made a little loop to see whether... Oh, what's freezing over here? Ooh, what is freezing over here? Anyway, you might remember that I made a little loop to try and, like, compact the gases together a little bit better. And that worked well when there were two branches. And I thought, hey, if two branches are good, why not try three? No, three is not great. So I've come along and I've put down a little deconstruct order here. But obviously, with the gas pipes all underway, there are much more important jobs going. Yeah, look at all of this. Uh, water that has just polluted ice that has just melted. I should imagine it's that stuff over there. So, tracing along this pipe here, you can see that really only this little section here needs to be done, and I can understand why that's a problem, uh, but that's because there's only three atmospheric suits here, and one thing I want to do is stop people going through. Uh, hopefully, yeah, they just swap positions there. That's pretty good. Jelly went one way, and Mad Frank went the other. The big problem that I have is, of course, because we've got exosuit docks, uh, I want the people who go this way to stay on this side, and the people that go this way to stay on this side, so when they put the, do the suits away, it all balances out. Maybe, maybe this actually shows that we have a fundamental flaw in the way that we set up our base slash uh, airlock system. Maybe what we actually need to do is set up all of our um, bedrooms and such forth on this far left side, and then you only need to give them one airlock with, like, 20 atmospheric suits all along the bottom. Um, 
maybe a, an electrolyzer every sort of three or four suits to provide the oxygen away. Anyway, so there's one way in and out, and then they can... It doesn't matter which route they go then, because they'll all be going past the same place to take the suits off. So the atmospheric suits provide these guys with oxygen, right? That's fine. What happens to the carbon dioxide that they breathe? I was just, like, looking at the base being like, ah, oh, look, there's not much carbon dioxide at the bottom here. Aren't oh, my oxyphone's doing well? And then I was like, well, actually, the duplicants are spending a lot of time in the atmosphere suit, so that explains why we're not dumping so much carbon dioxide in the base. But what happens to it out here? I've never seen them dump a, like, canister full of carbon dioxide at any point. Have they, like, just stolen this, like, valuable gas asset off of us? It's not actually a valuable gas asset, but it's kind of a waste product. But still, I want to know. Oh, we're nearly there, we're nearly there. 58.1, we're just trying to get to 60. Has this actually triggered at 64? Ah, 64, so we're pushing the temperature up. It's going well. Hopefully we'll get some slick eggs soon. Uh, how long? 63, going up uh, about 17 per cycle. Mm, yeah, we're going to... We're gonna see. Two cycles, totally just muttered a lo load of maths into the microphone there. Yeah, two cycles and we will be having ourselves a new egg. Hopefully we can push up the temperature. It doesn't tell us what the change per second is, but eh, that's that's fine, that's fine. Oh, this is, this is turned up. The problem is I don't wanna go too hot because obviously we've got coal generators up here producing a bunch of heat. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want the heat to pass up into them and they then pump, pump over the 75 and over temperature. Okay, I've just watched this temperature go up to 59 and we're still in the same cycle. So yeah, I feel good about how this is gonna go. Okay, I'm changing the temperature here to 63 instead of uh, 65. Because I've noticed that this is also increasing its temperature steadily and the slick is at the temperature we want. So that's fine. He's doing okay with, with his calories. I'm worried about these guys because obviously they can't, they can't eat right now. I think we just saw an overheat. Did we just see an overheat? Where where was the temperature there? Uh, let's have a look at the properties. Oh, yes, we've got an overheat. Mm, not great. Okay, so let's try this. I'm going to put down a vent there, and then we're going to put down... Oh, sorry, not a vent, a, a pump there. And I'm going to put the vent down here. And when this stuff gets hot, we will pump out all the, all the hot gases. Yeah, that... That should hopefully work out fine. We'll put we'll put down an automation somewhere so that we can tell it to uh, be chill, if you will. Uh, oh, is it happened? I think it's happened. Contents none. The ice melted. Look at it all falling out here. Okay, this is this is fine. I can live with this. I've got lovely rainbow colored water here. White, yellow, blue. Mm -mm. Gonna have to figure out what to do with our now mixed wastewater. Ah, oh. well, I mean, it's funny, right? It's kind of funny. I wish I'd watched it happen. I really wish I'd watched it happen. But every time we looked, it was still like two temperatures off, two degrees off. Uh, two temperatures. Hey, listen to me, English. I like that they're just coming down here for infinite refined metals. Great. Wow. Even with the insulated gas pipe going from here at minus 28, we're up to plus eight over here. Now, obviously, we've still got a bunch of systems put in place. But wow, I wasn't expecting that to be quite such a drop. We are pumping it. The majority of the dis... In fact, let's uh, let's just come out here. Yeah, the majority of like halfway across the entire asteroid. But uh, that, that, that should be fine, right? Overnight, I've put in all the gas tubes for the return system so we can give this little system a go. Okay, we've got a bit of an issue here to do with reach. I'm going to try taking out these corners here and see if that helps. It looks like Miss can reach this one, maybe, but can't quite reach far enough for the rest. So we'll, we'll see what goes on there if we just take out those corners. But whilst I'm going to leave those go leave this job in those guys' uh, capable hands, I want to come over here and do a bit of a test. So you can see that we've got this thermo sensor. It's currently set to under... Uh, keep the water below 50 degrees i'm actually gonna go hey can we do 40 degrees because it's currently at 44 so we can see that the door comes and slot locks down this stops any liquids flowing across there and this should have started up this gas pump beautifully beautifully and then we're going to watch the gas come through this system then get used up over here but we're going to watch it come through this system and see uh how good the cooling effect is that that's basically what i want to figure out here and of course because they're doing work on the gas lines over here the entire gas simulation is just chunking along no no i didn't want that oh no oh he's he's gone and he's gone and done the baby but he's uh, still a long-haired lava at 85 percent beside despite being well over the temperature 62 i mean it's not well over but it's, it's uh 
well enough. Ah, ah, I really wanted that 15%. What about you guys? You're, you're still at the weird temperature. Oh, man, that's 30% here. That's, that's a little bit better. So the cooling is coming through. You can see that the temperature is coming, uh, the hydrogen, sorry, is getting through at about minus 20. By the time it leaves down the bottom, it's in the plus numbers. Not massively affecting the water around it, if I'm to be honest, though. Well, I suppose the best we can do is just leave it for half the cycle and see what happens. So let's say this tile up... No, this tile down here, the one that's getting the least effect, maybe? Uh, no, we'll do the top one. This, this top one here has salt water at 46.6 degrees. We'll come back to that. Hello, <laughs> with people coming in and out of here to grab the water, I think we finally just poured all of it down here that's going to overflow. That uh, works, I guess. Yeah, look, 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 here we go. People going through, and yeah, no, there's no problem. Okay, I like it. I like it. It works for me. And with this last insulated tile in place, we should finally have some flow going over here. No, okay, let's see what's going on with this. Uh, so we're currently, uh, we're currently too cool over here. Let's let's just do the same with what we did over on the other side and just give it a, a quick temperature test. So we've simulated it going over the temperature by, by lowering the temperature that we're looking for, and in goes the hydrogen. Now this is the first bit is not going to be overly useful because you can see we're pumping it through at quite the temperature but as it starts to go through it should slowly start to pull the temperature out of the uh, natural gas that is in the background there of course the natural gas guys it is going to try and counteract this but we will just see what happens it would be nice if we got this insulated tile ledge up above here built out but it turns out that people were too busy doing other things might have something to do with me setting uh, priority nines on all the other things around and about Okay, so it looks to me like we've got some sort of weird system set up. Yeah, there, there we go. We've, we're already at, we're at 48 degrees around here. Wow. The natural gas responds a lot quicker than the water down here, which we go and have a look at. It's dropped by 0.1 of a degree. 0 0.01. But with that, I'm going to say thank you very much for joining me for this cooling adventure. I will see you guys next time when we're going to go and build the uh, natural gas generators over there try and get the polluted water over to the uh the dracos over there so we can get them food it's basically what that's going to boil down to we're going to try and find the hatches and we're going to get on with plastic processing if the uh, the rest doesn't eat up all my time but we'll see you then where we're gonna do that bye <laughs>